please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Now, one of the mistakes people make is, oh crap, where was it? Uh, was I at the joint of the cap and the tube? I don't know, man. Where was I? Before the bike goes up in the air to pull the forks out, I'll generally strip the bike down so I've got full access to everything and just get it done. It's much easier that way. So first off, reflectors. Yes, they will go back on. And get these taken care of as well. Now all that prep with no stand in the way makes such an easy job of doing this instead of fighting to try and get around. The other part is moving the bars and getting it to steering lock. Really hard to do with a pin stand even though it's excellent at what it does. So think it through, see what works best for you. But certainly for me to expedite a job, this has always been the best way. Now we've got the converter arm. We're gonna set that in. We previously selected the correct pin Put that all the way to its maximum height, hold it up. Go ahead, bring your pit bull front stand in. The converter piece fits between the rubber legs. And now that we're secure in that position, the weight holds the arm up for the converter and we lift and push down at the same time. So now we've got everything in the air. Check it, it's rock solid. So first thing we're gonna do is take our wheel out. Bring that forward. Go ahead, set that through. So we know which way it all came out. So this gets set aside. Now, one of the mistakes people make is, oh crap, where was it? Uh, was I at the joint of the cap and the tube? I don't know, man. Where was I? So, at this juncture, because you're holding the fork, guess what you can do? You can go, oops, that was a bit naughty. I shouldn't have done that, really, should I? So, in holding the fork into its position, you haven't lost anything yet. So now we can go get the calipers and measure the height. All right, let's zero our caliper out. Now we've got to measure from the same place every time. So flat broad surface right here, we'll go to four o'clock. We'll measure straight down and we'll lock that in. And our distance, oops, 7.28 millimeters. So we know what we had stock. Where I put that back, well, that's gonna be up to me. If I wanna go back to stock, I can. We can go ahead and mark bottom out because this is literally bottomed out and put the black line on top of the dust seal so we know that that is our maximum travel. So we can see our bottom out mark. I'm going to keep the fork right there. In exercising the fork with the oil volume we put in, which is the same as stock, question is am I going to hit bottom out right away? with the heavier oil, or am I actually going to be shy of bottom out and therefore use the air spring, so the compressed air at the top when we get close to bottom. So gently leaning on it, not much stress. I can feel the air spring there. Now let's load this up and put a bit more energy into it and see if we can get it all the way to the bottom. No. So we actually, using the same volume but with a thicker oil, we're only getting to here. But we need to go ahead and get all the travel that we can have. Now that we're done with the front axle, it is set and the cotter pins there, we're not gonna bounce the front end because that bolt has a big shoulder, this has a big washer. The spacers keep the forks even in the machining. So we tighten both fork legs against both spacers. So because we have no pinch bolts on either side and they're both 
captive and crushed between the shoulder and the washer and castle nut, there's zero reason to bounce. So if you're looking and not sure, pinch bolts, general rule of thumb, if you have a pinch bolt, you bounce the front end to reset it and get the legs straight prior to then tightening and setting your brake caliper. Catch the full video at DaveMossTuning.com.